रोड मैप फॉर अ लो लेवल डिजाइन इंटरव्यू इज प्रेटी स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड लेट मी एक्सप्लेन एनी वन हु हैज वन टू टू ईयर्स ऑफ प्रोग्रामिंग एक्सपीरियंस इन एनी लैंग्वेज कैन गेट स्टार्टेड विद लर्निंग लो लेवल डिजाइन द फर्स्ट थिंग दैट ही और शी शुड डू इज टू लर्न क्लीन कोडिंग नाउ वॉट इज दिस क्लीन कोडिंग एंड वाई इज इट इम्पॉर्टेंट so let me explain it through an example let us say your tech lead asks you to check out a new package on your id and fix a bug what will you do the first thing you'll have to do is you'll have to read the entire code and then figure out that in which file at which function the change is to be made right now if you look at this journey can you tell me what would be the ratio of reading time of the code versus writing time of the new code for any developer you guys can comment your expected ratio here in the chat box by the way this ratio is huge that means a lot of time is spent in reading the code now if a code is not clean if it is dirty then it will take a lot of time to understand the code so the developer productivity is going to get hampered so developer productivity is directly proportional to how clean the code is a cleanly written code doesn't give you lot of cognitive burden while reading it it literally feels like a true prose or poetry on the other hand if you are reading a dirty code then it gives you nightmares after you have finished learning the principles of clean code the next thing you should do is you should learn at least one programming language which goes via object oriented paradigm and if you are unsure which language to pick just in case you do not know any i would strongly recommend java or c++ so when we talk about oops the obviously important things to know are the four pillars encapsulation abstraction polymorphism inheritance but not just that you should also know in and out of important keywords like what is static what is final and all such sorts of stuffs after you have got a mastery in one particular object oriented programming language the next thing you can do is you can learn the solid principles five solid principles and let me tell you these are the backbone behind any low level design now when you learn solid principles just make sure that you are not learning them in a very process oriented way you're not just going through the definitions and browsing through some random code snippets no just pick any one principle for example let's say i which is interface segregation principle and just imagine that if you were given a situation how would you solve for that situation had you not known about interface segregation now once you know about interface segregation how would you react to it so this is the manner in which you can actually pierce through the depth of solid principles and learn how to apply those in the real scenario now you would be at a stage where you can pick a very simple design problem let's say design snake and ladder game or design a to do app and then you can try creating the classes interfaces and all such entities on your own and verify if solid principles are being honored or not now many a times it may happen that some of those principles are being honored while others are being violated it doesn't mean that your solution is wrong when we talk about design there is nothing called as wrong or right over here there are just the trade offs and that you understand as you gain more maturity as you see more and more examples in practice the final thing that you have got to do is you have got to explore the different design patterns out there now see there is a strong difference between design patterns and design principles so what are design patterns design patterns are just like some problem solving patterns that you see in dsa for example once you have practiced a lot of dsa problem given a new problem you are able to figure out that hey here i have to use binary search and answer here i have to use a priority queue you able to figure those things out similarly there have been some patterns which have stood the test of time and what i basically mean by that is you can look at a problem and then you can identify certain properties inside it for example let's say there are a lot of states a lot of states of data or entities in your system and then those states get transition from one to the other 
and that sort of forms some sort of state diagram you end up realizing that hey this is the right fit for state design pattern now you do not have to learn all the different design patterns that are out there if somebody tells you that hey learn all the 12 13 14 different design patterns and you are going to be great at LLD just plug your ears and move away that is not true you know it's just like saying that you learn all the different data structures little bit this little bit that and then you would master problem solving that's not true you learn just the important data structures and learn them in depth and learn the art of problem solving through them the same thing has to be done here there are some very well known and extensively used design patterns like strategy pattern observer pattern you learn about those and you learn to apply those and then you become a much more mature developer when it comes to low level design once you have learned several design patterns just collide head on with some challenging case studies and then try applying those design patterns now do not apply those design patterns in a proactive way apply them in a reactive way what i mean by that is try solving the problem at hand in a brute force manner and once you realize that certain solid principle is being violated over here try to bring in some design pattern something that can solve that so this is how the journey looks like and just make sure that you practice lots and lots of case studies before you really embark on to designing some production systems or for that matter face an interview in general i wish you all the best